Now to the death of legendary soul singer Barry White. White died Friday at the age of 58 at a Los Angeles hospital. In 2003, the world mourned the loss of Barry White, the iconic singer known for his soulful voice and timeless love ballads. However, a startling new viral footage is shaking the foundations of this accepted history and bringing the circumstances of his death into question. Today, we delve into the extraordinary journey of one of the most iconic soul singers, unraveling the shocking circumstances surrounding his untimely demise. The footage. The newly released footage shows the legendary Barry White and the charismatic host Conan O'Brien on the Late Night with Conan O'Brien show. Running from 1993 to 2009, Late Night with Conan O'Brien is one of the most beloved late night shows in television history. Known for its absurdist humor, hilarious celebrity interviews, and featuring the best stand-up comedians and musical acts of the 90s and early 2000s. In the viral footage, Barry White looks very much alive while talking about the impact of his music on conception, his unique approach to performing live, and how his distinctive voice came to be. I woke up one morning when I was 14, and and, uh, up. Spoke to my, I spoke to my mother and I, uh, I scared both of us. <laughs> this newly released footage serves as a powerful reminder of the enduring legacy of the iconic image of the artist, the power of his voice, his passion, and how his timeless music will forever be remembered as a defining voice of a generation. Throughout his career, Barry White was honored with numerous accolades, including Grammy Awards and inductions into various music halls of fame. His contributions to the disco and soul genres were recognized and celebrated, solidifying his place in music history. However, behind the scenes, White faced a constant battle with his health, leading to the unusual circumstances that resulted in his death. Throughout his life, Barry White struggled with his weight, which had a significant impact on his overall health. When I get in Barry White's company, I used to be intimidated by your size, but you've disappeared. Well, Have you lost a lot of weight? Yeah. How do you do that? Stop eating. From a young age, he had a passion for indulging in delicious meals, especially his favorite comfort food, fried chicken. His love for food was deeply rooted in his upbringing and brain chemistry, making it even more challenging for him to make necessary dietary changes. As Barry White's music career took off, so did his love for food continued. Barry became addicted to food, using it as a source of comfort and escape from the pressures of his demanding career. His excessive weight put a strain on his body, leading to a myriad of health complications. One of the most common issues associated with obesity is high blood pressure. High blood pressure, also known as hypertension, occurs when the force of blood against the artery walls is consistently too high. This condition can lead to serious health problems, including heart disease, stroke, and kidney failure. Unfortunately, Barry White was not immune to the effects of high blood pressure, but weight was not the only battle Barry faced. Behind closed doors, he grappled with addiction, seeking solace in substances that offered temporary relief from the pressures of his fame. The toll of his addiction further compromised his already fragile health. He maintained a heavy smoking habit, reportedly consuming a staggering 150 cigarettes daily, equivalent to seven to eight packs. The constant exposure to smoke and the strain it placed on his lungs further deteriorated his already declining health. Despite his efforts to quit, Barry found it incredibly challenging to break free from the clutches of this addiction. Barry White's health issues took a toll on his career and personal life, leading to a series of devastating setbacks. One of the most significant incidents occurred in 1995, after a concert, when Barry White collapsed due to the strain his health issues had placed on his body. On October 30th of the same year, White was hospitalized due to a stroke induced by high blood pressure. Though he fell into a coma for four days, he was discharged a week after regaining consciousness. In addition to high blood pressure, White also battled with diabetes. It is believed that he may have suffered from type 2 diabetes, a condition often associated with obesity. Diabetes is a chronic condition that affects the body's ability to regulate blood sugar levels. It can lead to a range of complications, including heart disease, kidney damage, and nerve damage. Managing diabetes requires careful monitoring of blood sugar levels and making necessary lifestyle changes. During a 1999 tour with Earth, Wind & Fire, White had to cancel numerous dates due to exhaustion, high blood pressure, and a hectic schedule. Tragically, Barry White's health issues continued to impact him. Reports from family and associates indicated deteriorating health in the early 2000s with White struggling to stand. Despite his declining health, he was determined to keep performing and bringing joy to his fans. It was his passion for music that kept him going, even in the face of adversity. As he embarked on his final tour on November 23, 2000, little did he know that it would be a tumultuous farewell to the stage. 
The tour began with great anticipation as Barry's velvety voice reverberated through the concert halls, enchanting audiences with his timeless melody. However, lurking behind the scenes was the grim reality of his deteriorating health. Barry White's performances became more challenging. The strain on his body became evident, leading to mobility issues and swelling in his legs and ankles. These physical ailments were clear signs that his health was deteriorating rapidly. The stress of performing, coupled with the demands of his personal life, contributed to his elevated blood pressure levels. Despite the mounting health challenges, Barry's unwavering determination to continue performing pushed him to his limits. He soldiered on through the pain and exhaustion, driven by his unwavering love for music and his desire to connect with his adoring fans. However, it became painfully clear that his body was reaching its breaking point. In September 2002, Barry White faced hospitalization due to kidney failure attributed to chronic high blood pressure, coupled with suspected diabetes due to his mounting health challenges. Kidney failure occurs when the kidneys are no longer able to function properly, leading to a buildup of waste and toxins in the body. This condition requires ongoing medical treatment, such as dialysis or a kidney transplant. The search for a suitable donor began. Barry's family was the first to be contacted for the kidney transplant. However, due to his poor health, finding a suitable donor became an insurmountable challenge. For the next seven months, Barry and his family desperately held on for a donor. While waiting for a kidney transplant in May 2003, Barry experienced seizures, a common risk after a stroke, and was rushed back to the hospital. His loved ones and a team of doctors worked tirelessly to stabilize his condition and keep him going. Barry's family rallied around him, desperately trying to aid in his recovery. They played his own music to him, hoping to evoke positive responses and signs of improvement. Barry's health struggles were further compounded by the stress and conflict surrounding his healthcare decisions. Arguments and disagreements between his girlfriend and family caused immense stress for Barry, who was paralyzed and unable to communicate his wishes. A representative from his business management company, to whom he had given power of attorney, sided with his girlfriend, effectively excluding the rest of the family from the decision-making process. And while there were small glimmers of hope, his condition quickly deteriorated. The toll on his body was evident. At the age of 58, Barry White tragically passed away due to complications from cardiac arrest. Cardiac arrest is a sudden loss of heart function, often caused by an underlying heart condition. The announcement of his death came from his manager who shared that after years of battling high blood pressure, White passed away at Cedar sinai Medical Center around 9.30 a.m. on July 4, 2003. The viral footage not only captures the vibrant essence of Barry White's personality on the late night with Conan O'Brien's show, but also serves as a poignant window into the challenges he faced behind the scenes. The charismatic banter with Conan O'Brien reflects the enduring legacy of Barry's personality and voice, showcasing Showcasing the passion that fueled his music. However, delving deeper into Barry White's life unveils the intricate layers beneath the public persona. Barry White's Life Before Barry White became the popular icon and his life took a turn, White's early life was filled with shocking twists and turns. Born as Barry Eugene Carter on September 12, 1944, in the vibrant city of Galveston, Texas, Barry was surrounded by the sounds of blues, gospel, and jazz that echoed through the streets. When he was just a child, his family left Texas and moved to the Watts neighborhood of South Central Los Angeles, a place known for its vibrant music scene and cultural diversity. Little did he know that this move would shape his destiny in ways he could never have imagined. At a tender age, White began listening to his mother's classical music collection and took to the piano, emulating what he he heard on the records. White would listen to songs on the radio and forge a personal connection with them, using them as touchstones to specific moments and relationships in his life. He also actively followed the local music scene, immersing himself in the sounds and rhythms that surrounded him. Additionally, White's involvement in his church choir further nurtured his passion for music and provided him with opportunities to explore his vocal talents. Music became an integral part of his life, shaping his romantic experiences and eventually inspiring him to create his own music that would resonate with lovers around the world. Barry attended Jacob A. Reese High School, where he continued to nurture his musical talents. His vocal range expanded, allowing him to explore the depths of his soul through song. While his voice was originally a bit squeaky, at 14 years old, Barry's deep voice began to emerge. Barry's unique vocal timbre set him apart from his peers, and it became clear that he possessed a gift that was destined to be shared with the world. However, life in Watts was not without its hardships. The neighborhood was plagued by poverty and racial tensions, creating a challenging environment for young Barry. Like many young individuals, White found himself drawn to the allure of local gangs, which led to trouble and disappointment for his family. Barry's involvement in gangs exposed him to a life of danger and uncertainty. The streets became his playground, and the allure of power and protection drew him deep 
deeper into a world that seemed to offer an escape from the harsh realities of his surroundings. In an interview with Rolling Stone, White candidly shared his experiences, stating that he was involved in the 1965 riot. At the age of 16, Barry White found himself incarcerated for four months due to the theft of $30,000 worth of Cadillac tires. During his time behind bars, he had a transformative moment listening to Elvis Presley's rendition of It's Now or Never on the radio, an experience he later credited with altering the trajectory of his life. Tragically, his brother, also immersed in a life of crime, met a devastating end after being shot in the heart. This experience, coupled with his time in jail, served as a wake-up call for Barry. As he emerged from jail, Barry was a changed man. Didn't, did you start toward music then? Yeah, that's when I started. That's the only thing I had. That's, yeah. Yeah, no that's education, funny. very little education, you know, 12th grade, when drop out. Yeah. And uh, no trade, no nothing, just an idea and a belief in myself. At the age of 18, Barry would skip class to walk to the Capitol Records headquarters in Hollywood, standing across the street from the office and staring for hours. Witnessing the vibrant atmosphere of the area inspired him to pursue a career in Hollywood's entertainment industry, even though he lacked the ability to read or write music. He had discovered his purpose and was prepared to chase his dreams with unwavering determination. White's pivotal moment came when he was offered a chance to join a band and showcase his talents as a band singer in 1960. This opportunity marked a turning point in his life, igniting his passion for music and setting him on a path towards success. However, after joining the band, everything was not as rosy. Barry White faced numerous obstacles on his journey to recognition in the music industry. White moved to Hollywood and spent nearly a decade tirelessly honing his craft, collaborating with other artists, and persevering through setbacks. In the 1960s, he dove headfirst into the vibrant music scene of Los Angeles, working with various singing groups and small independent labels. It was during this time that he honed his skills as a songwriter and arranger, laying the foundation for his future success. Barry's talent and dedication soon caught the attention of industry insiders, and he began to make a name for himself as a sought-after songwriter. His ability to craft soulful melodies and heartfelt lyrics set him apart from his peers, earning him the respect and admiration of his fellow musicians. With his undeniable talent and magnetic stage presence, Barry White quickly became a sought-after collaborator. He lent his powerful vocals to various singing groups, infusing their performances with a touch of magic. These early experiences allowed White to refine his skills as a performer and establish his reputation as a rising star in the music industry. In the mid-60s, a new opportunity came for Barry White. Bob Keen of Delphi Records enlisted Barry White as an A&R man for his new Bronco Records imprint. Barry White swiftly immersed himself in the label's vibrant scene, collaborating with artists such as Viola Wills and the Bobby Fuller Four. Operating as a songwriter, session musician, and arranger, he showcased his versatile talents. Notably, White's collaboration with singer Felice Taylor produced the UK hit, I Feel Love Coming On. Other chart toppers like It May Be Winter Outside, But In My Heart It's Spring, and Under the Influence of Love solidified his reputation. White's early single, All in the Run of a Day, emerged under Bronco Records in 1967. He also penned Doing the Banana Split for the TV pop act The Banana Splits in 1968. As the 1960s progressed, Barry White's name began to gain recognition within the industry. His collaborations with singing groups garnered attention, and he caught the eye of independent labels eager to tap into his immense potential. It was during this time that White's career took a significant turn as he ventured into the world of independent music production. In 1969, Barry White took a significant step forward, signing with Forward Records in Los Angeles, a division of Transcontinental Entertainment Corporation, where he assumed the role of a producer. With his newfound role as a producer, Barry White embraced the opportunity to shape the sound of the 1960s. Barry White had this incredible ability to bring out the best in artists. His understanding of music and his knack for creating captivating arrangements set him apart from the rest. We knew we had something special on our hands. He poured his heart and soul into each project, infusing his signature style into the music he produced. As the decade progressed, Barry White's work with independent labels began to gain traction. His production showcased his unique blend of soul, R&B, and pop influences, captivating audiences and critics alike. The music he created resonated with listeners on a deep level, touching their hearts and souls. As the 1960s gave way to the 1970s, Barry White's career reached new heights. His talent as a producer and his unmistakable voice propelled him into the spotlight, solidifying his status as a music industry icon. In this section, we'll explore the pivotal moments that marked his breakthrough and his transition into a successful solo career. It was in the early 1970s that Barry White's musical genius truly shone. His work with the girl group Love Unlimited became a turning point in his career as he took on the roles of producer and songwriter for the group. A brand new group 
you usually go with them with a single first to get it out there and see what it's gonna do. You know, like they say, throw it on the wall and see if it sticks. <laughs> but Barry had so much confidence in us as a group, he said, no, we're gonna do a whole album. Together, they created a sound that was both soulful and enchanting, capturing the hearts of listeners around the world. Working with Barry White was a dream come true. His passion for music was infectious, and he pushed us to reach new heights with every recording. We knew we were part of something special. Building on the success of Love Unlimited, Barry White formed the Love Unlimited Orchestra, a groundbreaking instrumental ensemble that would become synonymous with his name. Their debut album, Rhapsody in White, showcased White's ability to seamlessly blend soul, funk, and orchestral elements, creating a sound that was both grand and intimate. The Love Unlimited Orchestra was a game changer in the music industry. Barry White's vision and his ability to bring together different musical elements created a sound that was truly unique. The orchestra's performances were a spectacle, captivating audiences with their energy and artistry. Stardom Legacy while the Love Unlimited Orchestra continued to captivate audiences, Barry White's solo career began to soar. In 1973, he released his debut solo album, I've Got So Much to Give. The album introduced the world to his deep, velvety voice and his ability to convey raw emotion through his music. It was a critical and commercial success, setting the stage for what was to come. Later that same year, White released his second album, Stone Gone, which became a game changer for his career. The album featured the hit single Never Never Gonna Give You Up, a soulful ballad that showcased White's vocal prowess and his ability to captivate audiences with his smooth, romantic sound. The song climbed the charts, solidifying White's status as a soul icon. His chart-topping singles and albums became anthems of desire, resonating with audiences around the world. Songs like Can't Get Enough of Your Love, Babe, and You're the First, the Last, My Everything became instant classics, dominating the airwaves and solidifying Barry White's status as a solo artist. His albums, such as Can't Get Enough and The Man, showcased his versatility and his ability to create music that transcended genres. Barry White's success as a solo artist was unparalleled. At first, he thought of himself as a producer, but after he saw the response that he got from people around the world, I think he grew to like it. His voice had this incredible power to evoke emotions in listeners, and his songs became the soundtrack to countless love stories. He had a way of making you feel like he was singing directly to you. When women listen to Barry White, they felt like they were getting taken care of. As his fame grew, Barry's influence extended beyond the music industry. He became a cultural icon, impacting the music industry as a whole. White's talent and artistry were recognized by the music industry, earning him numerous accolades, including Grammy Awards the 1980s, marked a new chapter in Barry White's career. As the music landscape shifted, White adapted his sound to stay relevant while staying true to his signature style. He continued to release albums, experimenting with different genres, and collaborating with emerging artists. In 1981, White released the album The Man Is Back, which showcased his versatility as an artist. The album featured the hit single Show You Right, a funky up-tempo track that showcased White's ability to groove with the time. The song became a chart topper and solidified his presence in the evolving music scene. During this period, White also collaborated with renowned producer Quincy Jones on the album Back on the Block in 1989. Their collaboration resulted in the Grammy-winning track The Secret Garden, Sweet Seduction Sweet, a sensual ballad that showcased White's ability to capture captivate listeners with his smooth, romantic sound. His deep, velvety voice and heartfelt lyrics struck a chord with listeners, making him a true icon of love and romance. Let's talk about some of the nicknames. I was looking over the different nicknames that you've been uh, given in your career. Dr. Love, Mr. Love, the Maestro of Love, Prince of Pillow Talk, <laughs> that's Ambassador of Romance, and king of disco. Due to the sensual nature of his music, some critics dismissed him as a purveyor of trashy or explicit content. However, White embraced his unique image and was unbothered by the labels placed upon it. In fact, he appeared as himself on The Simpsons, showcasing his willingness to engage in self-deprecating humor. In an interview with Rolling Stone, White confidently addressed the perception of him as a sex symbol, stating that it never hindered him and that he remained true to himself. He emphasized that his music was a celebration of love and that he was simply Barry White, unaffected by the various nicknames and stereotypes attributed to him. Despite the decline of disco in the 1980s, Barry White continued to release albums and tour, showcasing his versatility as an artist. He experimented with different styles and collaborated with various musicians, always staying true to his signature sound. His music transcended trends and remained relevant, a testament to his talent and artistry. In 1990, White received a star on the Hollywood Walk of 
Fame, a testament to his enduring impact on the music industry. This recognition further solidified his status as a legend and served as a reminder of his incredible journey from humble beginnings to international fame. As the 1990s progressed, White continued to release albums and perform live, captivating audiences with his powerful voice and magnetic stage presence. His music remained a staple in the hearts of fans around the world, and his concerts were a testament to his enduring popularity. Barry White's impact on the music industry extended beyond his chart-topping hits. He was a trailblazer in music production, experimenting with different sounds and arrangements to create a unique sonic experience. His use of orchestration and his ability to blend different genres set him apart from his contemporaries. White's influence can still be heard in today's music. His smooth, soulful sound has inspired countless artists who continue to draw inspiration from his timeless music. Artists like Bruno Mars, John Legend, and Adele have all cited White as a major influence influence on their own careers. His deep, velvety voice and romantic ballads have left an indelible mark on the soul and disco genres. His legacy lives on through his timeless music, which continues to be celebrated and appreciated by fans around the world. The music was phenomenal. I don't think anybody has made any music since like, like Barry White has. Barry White's legacy is one that continues to resonate with fans around the world, although it is not without its bittersweet moments. While he achieved remarkable success in his career, there were still unfulfilled aspirations and dreams that remained unrealized. White's untimely passing left behind a sense of longing for what could have been. However, his impact on the music industry and the hearts of his fans cannot be denied. His songs brought to life the concept of true love, resonating with listeners from all walks of life. His performances were legendary, leaving an indelible mark on the hearts of those who witnessed them. Barry White's music transcends time. His soulful voice and timeless sound continue to be cherished by fans around the world. His songs have become anthems of love and passion, reminding us of the power of music to touch our souls. Barry White's life was a testament to the power of perseverance and passion. From his challenging childhood in Texas to his involvement in local gangs, White overcame adversity and transformed his life through his deep love for music. His unique, deep voice became his signature, captivating audience audiences worldwide today, Barry White's legacy lives on, and his music continues to be celebrated and enjoyed by fans around the world. His contributions to the music industry have left an indelible mark, and his soulful sound will forever be remembered as a defining voice of a generation. Barry White's life may have been cut short, but his impact on the world of music and the lives he touched will endure for generations to come. Thank you for watching. Please click on some of the videos you see in front of you now.